So the next one, we're going to take g of x over f of x. So g of x is the square root of x. And f of x is going to be um, x squared plus 1. Now, typically, when you guys are dealing with a rational, you take whatever is in your denominator and set it equal to 0. So let's say x squared plus 1 equals 0. x squared equals square root of negative 1. Hey, guess what? You can't take the square root of a negative number. Um, so therefore, the domain um, is, is not 0 for all real numbers. It's 0 for imaginary numbers. So therefore, we can say that, hey, it's going to be all real numbers. But the problem is we have our square root in our numerator. So even though we can, we can plug in any number, and think about it. Is there any number, ladies and gentlemen, you can plug in for x down here that's going to make that 0? There's no number, because you're always squaring it and you're always adding 1. It's never going to get 0 for real numbers. If it's imaginary numbers, yeah, you can do that. But So you'd say, hey, it's all real numbers. However, you can't put all real numbers in the numerator, can you? You can, again, only do numbers that are greater than 0 or positive numbers, including 0. Whenever I'm trying to find the domain and I have a rational function, I always set the denominator equal to 0. Because that's going to tell me what values make the denominator equal to 0. And those values that make the denominator equal to 0 are not a part of my domain. Okay? Because 0, you can have 0. Here, you can't have 0. Here, you can have 0. Infinity is not actually like a number, so you can't really contain infinity. Yes, oh, I'm sorry. Go ahead and go ahead. 